Hello and welcome to another edition of Today in African History. Now this elegantly dressed, regal looking lady was born on this day. Who is she? Find out as we delve into our collective history as Africans. As we talk about those who have shaped our collective history, events that have also shaped our collective history as Africans and African descended peoples on the continent and in the diaspora. So let's get cracking with events that have happened on this day. But before I do that, by the end of this video, if you do like what we're doing here, please like the video. It just helps the algorithm push this video to more people who are interested in African history and the way forward for us as Africans. Also, if you haven't subscribed, subscribe to the channel, like the video, share the video. Most importantly, click on your notification bell so that you are updated whenever we upload a video. Okay, so let's get cracking. Today, we are going to talk about the Angola-Namibian Peace Plan. Now, this was the day that plan was approved. The year was 1988. Now, for those of you who are not familiar with the map of Africa, Angola and Namibia are in Southern Africa. So the, the Southern Eastern, the southern western side of southern Africa, if that makes sense. So, southwest Africa. So, go check out the map of Africa to familiarize yourself with where those countries are located. So, again, on this day in 1988, July 20th, the Angola Namibian Peace Plan is approved. Both Cuba and South Africa had suffered heavy casualties by 1988. And on this day, the decision was taken to evacuate their soldiers. Afterward, Angola, Cuba, South Africa, and the Angola-Namibian Peace Plan, which included Namibia's independence, were publicly recognized. According to three further reports, a deal was signed on the 8th of August and also the 18th of August of the same year. So thankfully, Angola and Namibia are at peace today, but it wasn't without a fight, which claimed the lives of international soldiers as well. Soldiers from Cuba, South Africa, Angola and Namibia, obviously. Um, but they had to evacuate, and the peace was finally restored to both countries. Also, on this day, the former German colony of Cameroon, now spelled with a K, so it's K-A-M-E-R-U-N. So that was the German spelling of Cameroon. It was given to the French under the name of Cameroon. So it was now spelled C-A-M-E-R-O-U-N, which later changed its name to Cameroon. That's the English spelling, which is now C-A-M-E-R-O-O-N in 1960, as well as to the British under the name British Cameroon, so the, uh, the latter spelling. Um, it was called British Cameroon North and British Cameroon South, which subsequently joined Cameroon, O-O-N, in 1961. I hope all this makes sense to you. So it, essentially, Cameroon changed hands from the Germans to the French and then to the British. Okay, but on this day, the former German colony of Cameroon with a K was given to the French under the name Cameroon with a U, so O-U-N, which later changed its name to Cameroon, O-O-N, in 1960. Also on this day in 1970, this man here, he represents the South African scientists who developed a new method for uranium enrichment. So the year was 1970 
The Prime Minister, who is pictured here, I beg your pardon, so he was one of the scientists, Prime Minister Balthazar Johannes Vorster, declared in the House of Assembly in Cape Town. So he declared that South African scientists had developed a new method for uranium enrichment. This announcement was made in Cape Town at the House of Assembly. He added that the South African Atomic Board, AEB, was building a pilot facility for this procedure. So kudos to South Africa. Um, well, uranium can be used both positively and negatively. So hopefully this discovery would um, mean that South Africa would use uranium to uh, put, would put uranium to positive use I beg your pardon another Freudian sleep from yours truly right let's move on now to the next event that happened on this day now this intelligent lady her name is Suhaya Al Kalamawi she was an important literary personality and politician from Egypt Born on this day in 1911, she died on the 4th of May 1997. She was influenced, she influenced Arabic literature and culture through her writing, a feminist activism and advocacy. She was one of the first women to enroll at Cairo University and the first Egyptian woman to receive a PhD and Master of Arts for her research in Arabic literature in 1941. She became the first woman lecturer at the university after leave, after receiving her degree. So kudos to Suhaya Al Kalamawi, who was the first PhD and master's degree holder, who also was a researcher in Arabic literature. So the first woman PhD in Egypt and the first woman to receive a Master of Arts degree also in Egypt. Okay, also on this day, it's back to South Africa and um, I guess the picture tells the story, but not the whole story. The sole South African product to reach the moon was called Pratly Hotty, which NASA deployed on Apollo 11's Eagle landing vehicle on this day in 1969. With the help of scientist Frank Robinson, the South African George Montague Prattley created Prattley Potty, an epoxy potty glue in the 1960s. The material was created to act as both an insulator and an adhesive for fastening brass terminals inside cast iron junction boxes and was deployed on the Apollo 11 that went to the moon on this day in 1969. Okay, so that's it with the Pratley Potty on this day making history July 20th, 1969. Of course, we all know what happened on that day in the United States of America. Okay, so Next is this lady who was also featured in the thumbnail, who is also featured on the thumbnail. Her name is Betty Anyamu Akeredolu, the first lady of Ondo State in Nigeria and an aquaculturist, born on this day in 1953. She is married to Governor Oluwa Rotimi Odunayo Akeredolu. So, governor of Ondo State. She is the founder of the Breast Cancer Association of Nigeria. So, Ondo State is a state in western Nigeria, so southwestern Nigeria. So, go check Ondo State out. Um, it's a state known for um, professors, a lot of professors have come from that state higher than the average Nigerian state. So there are a lot of educated people in Ondo State, lots of investment opportunities as well. As usual, Nigerians as a whole are generally friendly and very welcoming. The people of Ondo State are no exception. Okay, so again, this is Betty Anyao 
are carried to the first lady of Ondo State of Nigeria and an aquaculturist born on this day in 1953. So if my math serves me correctly, she would be 70 years old today. So it's happy birthday. This is Betty Anyao Akaridolo. Last but not least is this lady here. Her name is Aisha Abubakar. Born on this day in 1966, she is a Nigerian politician and Minister of State for Industry, Trade and Investment since 2015. Aisha Abubakar is also a Nigerian politician. Following the 2015 Nigerian general elections, she was appointed as Minister for, of State for Industry, Trade and Investment by the outgoing president, Muhammad Buhari. Again, this was in 2015. So it's happy birthday, Aisha Abubakar, born 20th July, 1966. On that note, guys, we have come to the end of today's Today in African History. I hope you enjoyed what we done with sharing here on this channel. If you haven't liked the video, like the video. That is, if you do like it, subscribe to the channel, turn on your notification bell so that you are updated whenever we upload a new video. Thanks once more for dropping by. If you're a returning visitor, if this, this is your first time, thanks for joining us today. We hope to see you tomorrow for another edition of Today in African History. My name again is Sotonye Afiasima. Take care of yourself. See you tomorrow. Bye-bye.